when you decompose lead carbonate what are the end products carbon dioxide uh -huh. and lead oxide and lead oxide how do you write lead, lead, the lead carbonate when the class is for the first three words, class, eh? Monica? Lead carbonate. PB. 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 Okay. PB. CO3. CO3. Good. Monica? Um, who is that? Who is that? Uh, one person has not come back. Who is that? That person will not come back. Who is that? Stewart. Okay. So that is one way. Another one is. Uh, the composition of potassium chlorate, potassium chlorate, potassium chlorate. That one decomposes, decomposes to give us potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Um, another one is uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Uh, we shall look at the, some of this and see why when you heat a hydrogen carbonate like sodium, the end product is sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. So when you heat a carbonate, you must see at the end carbon dioxide there. Okay. But if you don't see them, then you know there is a problem somewhere. My camera is failing to share, but I want us to go to the next reaction, which is a displacement reaction. So as I look for ways of putting that, uh, okay. let us discuss something on this. Uh, here, before we go there. Do you see this word? Yes? Yes. Yes. Uh, because from next week, I expect to see very good projects on this. We have now learned how to write equations and balance. There is uh, that paper. If you don't have it, you go to our what? Our page. It is there on study materials. You download that paper. It is there, and you use, you write. Most of these equations, please don't be like other people. In other words, lazy. Because laziness is what kills most people. And if you don't want to learn more, if you, want to, if you don't want to discover more, you will never learn. The more you discover is the more you learn. Failure to discover, nothing. You won't get anything on the silver spoon. Okay, so this is that is part of that. Anything you fail from there, you tell me, and I will let you know. Okay. Mm. Uh, Someone has read the gender balance. Ruth, Ruth has finished. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. This is your part up to here. Yes. Read for us this part up to here. Atomic structure. Mm -hmm. An atom is the smallest part. Mm -hmm. Atomic structure. Yes. Uh, I suppose the Atomic. Uh huh. You have stopped there. Atomic, an atom is the smallest particle of an element. 
that takes part in a chemical reaction. All atoms of the same element are identical and different from those of other elements. Good. Now, when we are, we are been writing sodium ions or sodium atoms as Na, is there ele element anywhere we have written as Na? Yes? Is there an element we have written as Na? No. Very good. That's what they are saying that eh? all atoms of the same elements are the same and they're identical. You can know them because of their reaction, the way they behave. We just know that this is an element of sodium. This is an element of, 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 of maybe potassium. This is an element of something else because they react the same way. The way this one behaves, the way the other one behaves. Even if you mix them together, you will finally end up separating them because you know how they react. Okay. So that is the way you define that. So when they ask for an atom, you must know from the start of the end, we have seen this that it is the smallest particle of an element that takes part in a chemical reaction. Okay. So anything that takes part in a chemical reaction, that's what happens. Now, this is what we have here. The shape of... Uh -huh. Someone, Pav. Pav? Yes, sir. Where I have violated. If you say the shape of one, shape of one atom. Mm -hmm. An atom is spherical in shape and has a small region in the center called the nucleus. Very good. The nucleus is surrounded by circular parts known as electron shells or energy levels that carry electrons. Mm -hmm. These shells are represented as circles. Mm -hmm. So that is what we have. So out of these words, out of these words, the shape of an atom, we have some few words that are highlighted. Hope you have also highlighted them in your book. Oh, huh? We have defined an atom. We are looking at, we have been talking about these atoms every minute, every minute atom. We want to know what is this that is responsible for the reaction. An element, okay? Because even writing a chemical equation, if something is an atom, it behaves that way. So we want to know exactly what it is. Now, if you look at this, because when you are, when we are writing chemical equations, we want to discover something from it, and it's going to give us our next point of discussion here. It is called displacement. What? Reaction. Displacement reaction. Very good. Now, if you come to atomic structure, we are going to be combining these together because we are going to start projects. And when you start projects, you don't need to ask me where this comes from. No. You have to design for me one and you give me what you mean. Now, we are on the atomic structure, structure of an atom. When they talk about structure, you describe how that something looks like. That is the structure. <clears throat> so here they are saying, if you want to know this, first define an atom. So an atom is the smallest particle of an element that takes part in chemical reaction. That's what they have. Uh -huh. All atoms of the same element, if they have the same element, they must be identical and different from those of the other elements. You never find the one element having all characteristics of the other elements, no? If it is that element, it's different from other elements. So the shape is always spherical. Spherical. Who knows that shape that is spherical? Mm -hmm. The shape that is spherical, who knows it?
The earth. Hmm? The earth is spherical. The earth is spherical. A sphere. Who knows how a sphere looks like? Does it look like an egg? Yes. Does it look no. like an, an egg? No. Uh, how does a sphere look like? Sean. Huh? Where is hope? Hope has gone where again? Okay. Sean. Yes, teacher. A sphere. How does a sphere look like? Looks like a circle. Looks like, like an egg. Like a circle. Like a circle. Yes. I thought a sphere looks like an egg, something of the kind. An egg is oval. An, oval. an, egg, an egg is oval. Yes. yes. <laughs> what if I cut that egg in the middle? I look at it directly at the position where I've cut it from. Doesn't it look like a circle? <laughs> Maybe the <they> yolk. <laughs> okay. So that is what we have there. So an atom looks like that. It's a sphere in shape and has a small region in the center. That region in the center is called what? Now we are looking at the structure. This is the center. And that region in the center is always drawn in chemistry like this. Like that. You can also add your or you can shade. This region of an atom is called the new. It's called what? Nucleus. Nucleus. So if you are defining the shape of an atom, what you must tell us is that in the middle here, we have the nucleus. Now, the nucleus is surrounded by what? The nucleus is surrounded by? Yeah? Electron shells. So after the nucleus, the first thing that revolves around it is something in circular path. And they are as many as they are, depending on the nature of an atom. Now, this circular path here, is what we call the electron what? Electron shell. If not shell. electron shells, they are the energy, energy level. level. Okay. Now, they carry, what do they carry? Do they electrons. Carry? Electrons. So here on this shell, we have electrons. So you mark those words. We have found electrons there. Then these shells are represented as circles. That is what we know. So this one is called the first, the first shell, second shell, the third shell. First is the one that is close to the nuclear. The second one is the second, then the third, not from here, outside. It is always the first one is the first after the the nuclear, okay? If you don't say the first shell, you say the first energy level, or it is the K, the K shell. So this one is called the K, the K shell. This is the L. So they name them from the first one as K, L, M, N, like that going on. So for now, don't ask me why are they called the K, L, M shells. Just know that is there. If it's not called the first energy level, it's called the first shell. If it's not called the first shell, it's called the K, the K shell. So if you want to know, I will not stop you from knowing. Go to Google and look for those what, why they are called the KLM shells. Okay? We shall know later, but for now, if you want to know, for those ones who read, faster than the teacher and they want to discover more in chemistry, please, I've not stopped you from reading. Do what? Discover. 
In, in studies, those days it used to be teacher center, teacher could give you almost a lot. Now it has changed. Knowledge must come from you. So if you want to discover more, do research. Okay. You have the phone, you have data, go to Google and put in those words. Why are these things called the K shells or the L shells? They will tell you where they migrated from. Okay. Yes. Uh, so this is followed by the shadow, the third shell. Uh, the energy level closest to the nucleus is called the first one or the K shell. The second closest is called the second energy level or the second shell. Uh, and it's called the L. So they start from K, L, M, N, and they go on, ETC. From the shell closest to the one outside. So the general structure of an atom looks like this. So this is the general structure. This is the nucleus. If you look at the nucleus here, it consists of what and what? It consists of protons and? and it? Neutrons. New Neutrons. Neutrons. Now we have found the three words. We have found the three words. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. Neutrons. And they are all part of uh, part of an atom. Okay? So anatomy con is consists is composed of particles, namely protons, neutrons, and electrons. Where do we find electrons? Where do we find electrons? Neutron. Where do we find electrons? We read somewhere on the what? on the energy level energy energy level if you don't want to say the energy level what do you say electron electron shell that is the word so these ones revolve around the they wrote they roam around the they roam around that shell. that's what you have so every shell has a specific number of electrons must contain then protons and neutrons are found inside the what? The new? The nucleus. New the nucleus. That's why we find them. Now we want to know in detail what is a proton, what is a neutron, and what is an electron. Okay? So in simple terms, a proton occurs in the nucleus. That one we have known where it comes from. And then proton has a unit mass, unit mass of one. That is, it is which unit mass is one. Then they also say that it carries, each proton carries a charge of positive what? Positive? One. Each, each proton carries a charge of positive one, each. If you look at the proton, each carries a charge of plus one. Then, in simple terms, the total number of protons in the nucleus, the total number of protons, if you add them together in the nucleus, total number of protons, number of protons in the nucleus gives us what? Gives us the name atomic what number atomic number. So when they ask you what is atomic number, just say is the total number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. If not, atomic number is the same as the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Okay. Yes. So each proton has a charge of plus one. So if they are, if they say sodium is NA and it has 
11 protons. What is the atomic number of sodium? What is the atomic number of sodium? One. No. They tell you that the atomic number is the same as the total number of protons in the nucleus of one atom. If something has 11 protons, what is that atomic number? Hmm? Atomic number is 11, isn't it? Yes? Yes. Because they said from here, atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. So if you have the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, that's the same as the atomic number of that element, isn't it? Yes. Very good. Uh -huh. So here they are saying that the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is the atomic number. Then the atomic number of each element is unique. And it is identified, it's used to identify the element. All the atoms of the same elements have the same atomic number. So do we know protons? Do we know atomic number? I give a pardon on that. The first question before I pardon is, where do we find protons in an atom? In the nucleus. In the nucleus. Very good. The nucleus. If, if they are found in the nucleus, read along this. Each proton carries, each proton carries a positive charge. That's why I want to go on. Each proton carries a charge of plus one. That is all. Now, if you add up all the protons in the nucleus of one atom, you will get atomic number. So atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of one atom. So at this level, just know that the protons is the same as atomic number. OK? So when they say atomic number, it just says the total number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. That is the only thing required there. And you must know that it is positively charged. Protons are positively charged because each proton has a charge of plus one. That is in simple terms. So in your summary, when you have protons, just say protons, uh -huh, it has a charge of positive one. Positive one. It has a, if it has a charge of positive one, the sum of protons, sum of protons, protons in the nucleus, in the nucleus, gives us atomic number. So when they ask for the word, what is atomic number? You must be positioned to tell us that is the sum of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Okay. And each element has. It is the own atomic number. And that one gives us the number of protons in the nuclear of that one. Is that clear? Yes. Good. When you, eh? when you come to neutrons, neutrons, sorry, neutrons here, where do you find neutrons? Nuclear. In the nuclear. The nuclear. Very good. Now, let's understand this, that neutrons occur in the nucleus of an atom. It has a unit mass of one, i.e. the mass that is approximate the same as that of, as that of the proton. But in total, a nucleus carries no charge. It is neutral. A neutron carries no charge and it is Hey, someone is making noise on the ground. Who is that? Please. Like that. Thank you. So they are saying that eh, neutrons have no charge. They are neutral. So this one, the name is neutrons. They are neutral. That is the name. 
So the sum of protons and neutrons, when you add protons plus neutrons, they give us something. Who has discovered it? Who has discovered? What do they give us? A proton. When you add the sum of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom, is called what? A new, an electron. You keep reading this statement up to the end. Uh -huh. Atomic means. Atomic. Give us atomic. Atomic mass. Oh, mass. Mass number. So these ones mean the same. They are different from atomic number. Number is different from the mass. So the, either you say atomic mass or mass number. So these two words are different. So inside the nucleus, like this, we have two things. We have protons and neutrons. Now protons alone give us atomic number. Atomic number. Uh, we have about 10 minutes to stop this. And then neutrons, neutrons are neutral. If you add the neutrons and protons in the nucleus, give us what we call the mass mass number. So if you know that the protons are positively charged, neutrons are neutral, they carry no charge. And you add protons and neutrons, they give us the mass number. Then you know what the structure of that atom looks like. Okay. Then finally, let's look at these words, electrons, electrons. Electrons occur in the energy level or electron shells and constantly rotate around the nucleus. They constantly rotate around the nucleus. This number, don't mind about it for now. You will know it when you come to, when the chemistry advances. So therefore it has, it is mass is said to be negligible and it carries a charge of negative one. one. So a nucleus or the new, Electrons, electrons are negatively charged and negatively charged. And they revolve in, these ones are not in the nuclear. So if they ask for the, for this where they are found, don't tell us they are found in the nucleus because they might give you, like now, we are going to describe, describe, these are our projects. Describe the structure of an atom. So you must tell us where these things are found. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. And you draw and define all of them. So this is what I'm trying to mean here. That electrons are negatively charged. And they revolve around what? The electron shells and are constantly rotating around the nuclear. That is all we need. So the number of electrons in the energy level, negative charges, is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. So electrons and protons are always the same. Except for a certain few, we are going to look at them and what name they have. So electrons and protons, these one, protons are positively charged. Electrons are negatively charged. Their number must always be the same. Electrons and protons. And then neutrons are neutral. For them, they carry no charge. Hence, an atom is a neutral because of the number of positive charges. The number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges. That is an atom. Now, if you want to react, you must charge it. If you charge it, it will lose some of the electrons. We are going to see how they lose those electrons slowly. So here we say, we looked at two words. That is atomic number and the mass number. We know where the mass number is. The total number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. The mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons, in, not electrons, protons and neutrons. The sum of the two gives us the mass number. Now, uh, 
they are always symbol the, the symbol they use for mass number is z atomic number is z and then the symbol for atomic number is a so when you find a compound written like this w a z is always like this and it is w the element is w it has atomic number z and mass number a so a symbolizes uh atomic number and then uh, z symbolizes atomic number then a symbolizes the mass number or atomic mass then this is our atom atom so if they say any a 20 uh, 23 11 this one is just inverted they are supposed to put here sorry uh, they supposed to write here something like this w a and then z where a is the mass number and then z is atomic number it's supposed to be like this mass number and then atomic number if something is any a and it has 23 and then 11 what is the mass number what is the atomic number mm -hmm. i'm waiting for the answers mass number is 23 mass number is 23 atomic number 11 11 how many protons does it have 11. 11. 11. Very good. Ruthie, Hope, Elizabeth, have we known where they come from? <laughs> huh? <laughs> where they come from? Yes. We asked you that. Eh? This number here on top always gives us the mass number or atomic number. Then this number yes. down, the number down gives us the atomic, uh, this atomic mass, sorry. Then this one gives us the atomic number. If you don't want to say mass number, you say it is atomic mass because of word mass, mass. Then you say atomic number is always down. So if they write an element like this, NA2311, you find that the mass number is 23 from here. Then atomic number is the one down, which is 11. When they ask for the number of protons, just say protons is the same as atomic number, which is 11. Is that clear? Yes. Very good. Yes. Now, I want, us, I want us to hurry before this, these minutes expire and look at this electron arrangement in the nucleus. Else uh, we shall do this next time. But I wanted us to know how to draw these things, then we shall do them. Okay, we shall do this tomorrow. Okay. Arrangement of electrons in an atom. Then from there we shall come back and you see this uh, stubborn topic called uh, old stubborn equation here, displacement reaction okay yes yes okay before we go any further is there any question you need to ask yes yes Ruth. Mm -hmm. This book which you're having, teacher, mm. is it accessible? This one? This one for all level chemistry, this one. Right now, which we are seeing on our screen. It is, it is accessible. You want a copy? Yes? Yeah. Pardon? You, you need a copy of this uh, yes. book? There is, there is, it is there on the what on the 
on the platform. Just go to resources, download else. I'm going to post it or send it to you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to send it to you after a few minutes from now. So this is what we are meaning here. So our project for today, if you have summarized before you go, you have known our project. Yes. This yes. Is our project for today. You are going to use your own word to describe the structure of an asset. So I must see that work before even we start the lesson tomorrow because I have to read it through and know what people have written. Okay? Yes. yes. Very good. Yes. So if all is okay, there are many questions you are be writing after every minute. So if you have nothing to do, allow us to close 